So today I've got a really great guest and this is going to be the start of many great guests for the channel to help you with your anxiety, uh, especially in dating and just building your confidence as well. And today I've been very fortunate to come and visit David and uh, talk to him. Uh, he's a, a dating coach who helps men over in Australia and work on their confidence so that they can find happy relationships as well. So if anything, thank you very much for letting me come and visit you in sunny Essex no worries, thank you, uh, as well. Um, and I suppose just to get started really, as with all things, um, I would love to kind of hear how you got yourself involved in the, uh, the dating community mm -hmm. and <clears throat> what was life like for you before you got involved in it? Mm. Oh, good question, yeah. <laughs> um, Got to go straight in yeah, yeah, yeah. deeply with straight that. In the past. Yeah, well, for me, that was, um, well, I suppose at university, starting from there, I had two girlfriends, so I was kind of <clears throat> occupied. But that was more of, um, more of a fluke in terms of how I got into those relationships. And then, uh, and by luck... And then went to London in 2010 when I was 22, I think, yeah. And, um, yeah, I was just very shy, very nice boy, really, very polite um, and was definitely, I don't know, just a bit wedded to the, the Disney fantasy of women want, you know, a nice guy and a polite guy and, um, you know, just, just someone who's very... Yeah, like, I don't know, non-threatening, just a very, very nice person, really. And that's, mm. that's kind of who I was. But I was also uh, quite terrified of, of the opposite sex. And so in my first few years in London, uh, from a dating point of view, nothing really happened. Um, and in my, there was a year, I think it was between late 2010 and 2011, I didn't go on a single date. I didn't get a single phone number. Um, nothing happened at all for me. Um, and I suppose like a lot of guys back then and even now maybe that I would just go out to nightclubs have some drinks scan the dance floor you know see some nice women but not do anything and mm. then just kind of be a bit of a wallflower and just hesitate all night and not really do anything whereas some of my friends could could go over and approach um this is before mainstream internet dating as well I think plenty of fish was around but nobody used it um, <laughs> I vaguely remember that yeah, well. yeah. Yeah, yeah everyone had at least the app for it on the old school like Nokia 3010s yeah. <laughs> so that so that was so that was that but I ever since I was young I always had the ambition that um, I would have a nice long term relationship I'd have um, you know a nice um, girlfriend who you know is not, not only physically nice but also um, just a nice person and stuff and I had aspirations for doing very well in the you know the dating scene but, but more, more for just having a, a long-term partner and girlfriend I always had that aspiration and so what was actually happening to me was I was very far below that standard um, and I, I just thought that as I got more older I would become more confident I thought that was a linear relationship and that something will just happen mm. um, it's that it's, it's again it's very it's, it's what a lot of people still believe I think today is uh, and you hear it just from like advice from you know your grandma and stuff you know oh you know something will happen you just got to be patient you know you can't look for it it'll just just happen mm. so I was doing that for years and, and nothing was happening at all um, or I might somehow um, you know get a phone number at the end of a night and I wasn't particularly attracted to the girl or she wasn't that much of a nice person but I would still text her and try and go on a date because that's all I had. So I was um, taking what I was given, like from society, I suppose, um, and I wasn't happy about it. And I, I think in some ways that is good because I wasn't, um, I, I wasn't happy in that space, so I wasn't truly settling. Because if I was settling, then I would have just gone out with someone very average who wasn't really for me, who I knew deep down wasn't for me, but I'd have just gone with that because it's just accepting your lot in life and I I wasn't that way but I didn't at the time have the energy or drive to fix it and all the means to fix it I didn't know how to do that so um that went on for a few years and then um yeah I just I just remember being very shy I remember um being quite anxious around women quite socially awkward um, was your your social circle of friends were they all guys or were there any 
women in it? Yeah, there were there were women in it because I was in house shares in London, so there were some women there. Um, I was also looking at like, could I meet someone th- like through social circles and networks, um, which never really happened for me. But mm. I was also a bit apprehensive about that because if you suddenly started having a relationship with someone in like a girl in your house, then that can change the dynamic. Yeah, um, a bit of a false worry for me because that was never going to happen anyway. So th- that's that's not really something I should have been worrying about. But um, yeah, I was very anxious, and I also held the view. Um, that I'm still seeing today on my own YouTube channel that you need to be a good looking guy um, and that I would see you know tall uh, rugby player type men doing quite well in nightclubs um, and stuff and, and um, I just thought that that was the case so I was very conscious about my appearance like I was trying to be a bit of a perfectionist in that space and I wasn't very good at that because mm. my fashion was okay but not that great so um, it was all the um, nice guys like me are left on the side. Uh, no, no woman wants me. Um, I'm shy. I can't approach. Um, I'm too nice, and I'm not bad looking. But I'm not to the level that I feel that I, sh- sh- or that I should, well, not should be that that, I, that other people were. I was I was quite jealous of say other men who whose appearance was better than mine or. They, they were very good looking and that's what I just assumed mm. is what you need um, and because you can't well you can't change your face really yeah. and that's why I thought oh I'm a bit screwed here so I was very um, it's also easy to get very caught up comparing yourself to other people especially when you don't have <clears> any <throat> good experiences to, to go by and you're just seeing other people constantly getting results yes all the time as well. Yeah, every Saturday you'd almost get reminded that you're not good enough. Yeah, and it becomes demoralising. I know, I remember for me, that was um, that was kind of one of the reasons when I had first got into the uh, the, the day game community or, or the pickup community back in uh, 2009. Yeah. You know, back then it was a little bit cooler and trendier to be learning to talk to the opposite sex. And I remember there was like so many different trainings and workshops and yeah. stuff back then as well. But um, I think, I mean, maybe, maybe you can relate to it as well, but uh, I know for me, I got into it when uh, a friend of mine had recommended Neil Strauss's book. Mm. And then suddenly it was, just became this eye-opening moment and then just went out and just was practicing some of the stuff that I'd read in it. Yes. And in a way, just bringing it back to the, the kind of like looks dynamic... I mean, I remember I was I was exactly in that same boat. I mean, I, my dress sense was awful. I mean, I remember wearing like clothes that were like twice or three times the size of what I should be wearing. Yeah, yeah. And I think I was walking around wearing like a t-shirt that was like the size of a tent. It was just massive. And you know, and then there would be me wondering like, why doesn't anyone want to go on a date with me? And, yeah, and all yeah. this and that. And you kind of then feel sorry for yourself, but deep down you know that there are changes that that you need to make to actually get the same results as the good looking people that mm. go out because they just understand what it takes to fit uh, I guess into society mm-hmm. um, and what it obviously means then to, to be to be attractive to people as well yeah yes so interesting <laughs> so okay so you you were then so then you'd you'd compared yourself with like your friends and stuff were, were you going out regularly when mm. um, when you'd uh, I suppose just before you got into the the world of, of working on your dating life? Yeah, um, yeah, I would go out a lot. I mean, I was early 20s in London and um, I would go out to Mayfair and Knightsbridge because that's the popular place on the Monopoly board. Oh, yeah. So I was like, I want to go. Most wanna... expensive place. Yeah, I want to go there. I didn't, I didn't really have the wage to do it. But um, yeah, I'd go there through because um, I was trying to make more friends, which was also a real challenge because London can be a hard place. It um, can be a lonely place. So I joined um, a website called City Socialising. And it was just like um, an internet-based service where people arranged events and you would go to them and you could filter by different things like sports or nights out. So yeah. I would go on nights out um, and go to these expensive nightclubs where you pay £20 entry and women getting free. Um, and I, I, again, was just going out trying to... Again, it was all down to chance. It was, all I was doing was just going out, um, yeah, basically to, to meet women, but I'm not prepared to do anything. So I'm just purely relying on chance. Um, and therefore I think with those odds you're looking at about once a year I think mm. that something might happen or you might get a phone number or opportunity for a date so um, yeah I would go out and then and then I moved from Tooting to Clapham which is a real party town full of Australians and New Zealanders yeah. so 
lived in a big house shed there. There's a bit, there's a high street, so you go up and go out in infernos and um, you know big, big dirty nightclubs, and, and basically just adopt the same approach. And I would see yeah other men do well. They would they would approach, and I would think oh um, you know the girl girls aren't going to be interested in that, and a lot of them would um, initially like resist or not show much interest. So the guy would like leave, my friend would leave, but then he'd come back later on. And then suddenly they've like much more warmed to him. Um, sometimes yes, because they've had more drinks, but sometimes not. And mm. it was just that persistence there. And then them approaching and doing that would kind of show me that my belief system was wrong and that theirs was working. And then they'd literally just get a phone number, kiss them or go home and stuff. And then I'm just standing there still trying to justify that my way of being the nice, honorable guy, that women don't want that. Um, is, is right, but then the results have just walked out the door. So, mm. <laughs> and I never, I was always in a bit of a battle with that, but I think it was hard because, um, you know, especially in your early to mid 20s and you, know, you first moved to London, I certainly had the expectation that, you know, I want to have a good single life or, you know, I want stuff going on with women because, you know, I'm a red blooded male and nothing was happening. And, um, and yeah, it, it got to like mid 20s, I think 25. Um, and I remember having a chat with my parents um, about it, a long phone call when I was just walking around Clapham, just really bemoaning my situation. And they, they were very good and listened and stuff, um, which I suppose is all they could really do. But it was just like, you know, I'm 25 now, nothing's happening, getting older, realise that with age doesn't come confidence. Mm. Um, and um, I was starting to get pretty pretty desperate, pretty wound up because I thought this can't be how it's going to be for the next rest of my life and that and I, it's good because that that where that's coming from is i'm not happy with my situation i've not accepted yeah this this state yeah i'm and in this you, position you accepted the responsibility of like if there's something that's going to change it's going to mm. be me to be the one to, absolutely. to do it yeah. absolutely and i think that's also really key because um also back then um as far as i'm aware there wasn't really this whole incel type culture and I think, you know, even today it's quite relevant and quite topical and maybe we'll talk about it or not. But yeah. I think for me, I never, I never blamed women for my situation. I mm. was never, you know, angry at them or even if I did get messed around, like sometimes they wouldn't text me back or they wouldn't, um, they'd say one thing and, and do another and stuff. But I never, I'd get a little bit upset in the moment, but I'd, I'd never really blame, blame them. And I never blamed women for the situation I found myself in. And I mm. think that, that is really key as well because certainly what I see um, on a lot of um, you know emails I get and YouTube comments you know even as recently as a couple of days ago I, I do get the vibe from a lot of men that women are the problem that um, the situation's hopeless um, and maybe some of them are in cells maybe not or maybe they're just borderline on that kind of fringe yeah and I I think that's really sad but I think um, I never, I never was in that that camp because if I was, then all I've done is shifted the blame and the problem to women or to society or mm. to anyone else, and therefore I wouldn't have fixed myself. But because I, I'm a great believer in, yeah, you can change your own situation in anything. I think that was good because, um, I, well, I did, and also I wasn't carrying that negativity at all about women like ever throughout mm. the whole process. Um, which unfortunately, you know, we both know men who've got negative views with women, you know, I mean, either they don't do anything about it or they, they go into, you know, some, um, dating courses with that and they harbor that all the way through. So for me, I never, I never had that. And I think also I've always had very healthy relationships, you know, with my mom, um, my sister with, with women generally as well. So I always had that and that's been around for decades. Yeah. Whereas my dating problem had only been going a few years. So I've never really been... Um, you know, damaged by women in any way, only affected positively. So I think that also helped with pushing me into the right direction. Mm. Interestingly, <clears throat> I think definitely over the years, um, I think the the guys who don't have a sister or they haven't got some kind of like support from a female relative in their family, usually they are the ones that tend to certainly struggle a lot more either with women or they don't... Um, uh, they don't see themselves as being the problem that they do. Instead, they're like, oh, yeah, it's just the women who don't like me um, instead. Mm. Um, and I know I think even for me, um, all those years ago, it wasn't so much that I like I felt that um, that 
uh, oh, it's it's women are the problem. I I had the mentality of, oh, it, I don't know what the problem is with the world, that it seems to be just everyone's problem. I'm the one who's trying to do like right here. Yeah. And it wasn't until I think I had joined that that dating community that 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 understanding had shifted mm. and the realization had soon enough or very quickly had kicked in like okay it's actually my own responsibility okay clearly now that i understand what a, an actual conversation needs to be you know even including like flirting or having correct body language and posture and stuff mm. you know you you essentially obviously learn how attraction works and I think it wasn't until I'd even learned like the most basic things with that, that suddenly that did tell me, right, okay, I need to completely change my ways here. And that at least took me on that very addictive route. Same with most men, because you suddenly get this taste of like, oh my God, actually there is some goodness, uh, good that can be done in the world. Or there is some, uh, some uh, joy that you can, can feel if you've not felt it before. Mm. And especially, I think, when you do start seeing results um, as well. So at, at what point then did you then move into the dating community and then, you know, you got, got involved in the world with that? Yeah, yeah. So um, so what, what actually happened was quite amusingly is I'd also by this point joined uh, internet dating app uh, Lovestruck. This is before Tinder. And the app was pretty good, but it was like £79 a month or something like that. Wow. It was really expensive, yeah. yeah. So I joined that, and I, I, I think I was getting like maybe two, two dates a year, three dates a year. And then in early 2013, I matched with this like really attractive Russian girl, even by you know, my today standards. Like, yeah, she was, she was pretty amazing. And messaged. Um, obviously, I had no idea about texting or dating. Went on, went on a couple of dates with her. Um, and obviously I really liked her, you know, super attractive again, personality wise, not great at all. Like really out for herself, um, bit of a selfie girl. And, but again, it was, it was that attitude of, well, you know, she's really attractive, uh, and this is probably the best I'm going to get. So just go with it. So I ended up having a relationship with her and then I found myself even more unhappy being in the relationship than not because, I was a very needy guy because of the lack of, you know, just general experience with women. Mm. I was uh, wondering, you know, what she's up to all the time, wondering, like, um, where, you know, where is she? You know, I was, I was very much that way. And I also knew that I was certainly not a top bloke, um, especially in the field of dating because of where I'd come from. And I knew that she was going out to nightclubs and stuff and I knew I couldn't approach, I couldn't do anything and I knew some of my friends could. So I'm, would feel very uh, vulnerable um, that I would be binned and that she would just upgrade herself with someone else. Um, <clears throat> so I was, I was not, I was not happy at all, and I, I didn't really know how to be in a relationship at all. I didn't want to be too needy, but I was. And it was just at five months of like stress, um, and she, yeah, I mean, she didn't, she didn't treat me that well. But I, again, I don't harbor any any grudges. Like she would agree to meet up and then just wouldn't turn up. Mm. Or she'd go out clubbing and then uh, she would say, can you p- pick me up at the train station or the tube station? I would then go there. She'd be like three hours late because she's just oh, having, having one more drink. So yeah. I'm just standing there and then knowing that this isn't right, but not going to shout at her because that could break up the relationship. Don't want to lose her. Yeah. So there's this, it was really, really bad, yeah, actually. So you, you had very, would it be low tolerance, high tolerance, where, where you, you literally were being walked, yeah. walked over. Walked really. over, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then sometimes she'd turn up, sometimes she wouldn't. And then I, if she didn't turn up, I'd just go back home. Sometimes mm-hmm. she would turn up and, and that would be that. And uh, some really important stuff she never showed for or would cancel last minute and stuff. So um, that, would, that was obviously a bit of an issue. And it, where that culminated in was it was a bank holiday weekend in May. And we were supposed to come to Essex to my parents' house supposed to spend the full weekend together and as the weekend approached she just started knocking off bits off the itinerary to the point that we were going to spend half a day yeah. with each other not four days and um she did arrive a couple of hours late went for fish and chips down at the sea came back um to the house again because i was needy and, and was kind of just angling for a bit of an argument i then just said to her you know why have you been late why are we only spending a couple of hours with each other today and she was just unbelievably honest and said well actually um the reason I was late was because uh, I was out with my ex last night in a nightclub. I went back to his house, uh, stayed there for the night. So 
of course, not sure. Like, well, I know exactly what they got up to. There. Wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, and then now the reason I'm late is because I had to go back to my house and uh, shower, change, uh, get ready to come see you. And uh, she then also just said that she couldn't uh, get this guy out of her system, even though it was the ex and so on. So obviously that was kind of not the answer I was expecting. Um, mm. And just like, wow, you know, it really silenced me and, and really hit me hard. Um, so I didn't really have an argument with her about it. I think for me that was like the end of the relationship there and then. So I, I then just said, look, you know, I'll walk you to the train station, being a nice English man. Walk to the train station and, 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 and that was it. And I was actually relieved that the relationship was, was over. I spent time with my, uh, some of my family uh, on that weekend as well, which was nice. And then, yeah, I just went back to, um, back to London and just chatted with some friends and, and it, it did feel right. And it was a real point of reflection for me because I thought, well, I'm pleased that's over, but I was more unhappy in a relationship than not. Mm. But by this point, I'd be- come across um, the, you know, the cold approach community, the game community, red pill community. And I'd already watched a lot of the videos. Maybe you were the, the cameraman behind it. I probably them. was. <laughs> yeah. I probably was yeah, at that yeah, point. I yeah. think I started filming with coaches. Well, I mean, I know I, I was working with um, uh, the company PUA Training back in 2009. Mm. So shortly I got in, after I got introduced to the world of, of pickup, it only took about a month until I was somehow working at the company who was teaching men it just as an intern. So I was like sending out like books and DVDs of the place, but mm. I had essentially had my own Neil Strauss experience where so many of the coaches had liked me that they just mm. took me under their wings and I just got to spend time with them. Uh, but yeah, go with what you said. Yeah. I, I think there's probably a likelihood that I <clears throat> would have been filming, but I know I didn't officially start filming with dating coaches until I think it was about 2013, 2014. Mm. Um, I think that was the official moment that I had said, right, I'm now a cameraman for the, the self uh, self development scene. And everyone that I'd worked with at PUA training, uh, a lot of them um, had come forward and said, all oh, right, well, can you do filming for my business and mm-hmm. film this event or film this workshop? And that was, yeah, that was kind of my ball with that. But Definitely, yeah, I think it was probably 2013 mm. that I did start creating content with coaches that yes. was going out on YouTube. Yeah, which is why I then started watching around that time. So I, I saw those videos and it just blew me away, like the, the, the ability to cold approach, because I just thought that looks absolutely terrifying. But then to see them just have interactions with women on the street to you know be getting phone numbers and stuff that's all i needed to see to thought to think that these guys have got complete freedom in their dating lives they're not limited by the women in the nightclub or internet dating it's the whole world is open to them mm. um, and i could just totally relate to i just thought women would really like this um, and you know the ability to just get numbers and i just thought they're going to be having fantastic dating lives huge amounts of options um, and I thought, I bet it does wonders for your confidence as well. So I'd already come across this. Um, and then when I came out of my relationship with, with the Russian lady, um, after just settling for a couple of weeks, um, that's when I booked in for... Um, oh, so she was she was Russian? She was Russian, yeah. Oh, that was already asking for trouble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but yeah, that's already asking for trouble. Yeah, yeah. So um, she actually once asked me to show where the Ministry of Defence was. So Right, um, but so she could... Go back to Russia. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you can find it on Google Maps now, but um, <laughs> yeah. she, I don't know. I, either she's got a very dark sense of humour that I didn't detect, but yeah. That was... uh, or, or she's involved in the world of espionage. Or, or she is a spy yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the GRU. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, after that, I, I knew that I, yeah, that I just wanted to do a course in cold approach um, in, yeah, with, with this, with these guys. There was obviously loads of companies back then, obviously not now, but there was loads of companies and I, um, you know, I just picked one and booked in for a weekend. Um, and that was in mid September, 2013. So, um, I was really excited. I was a bit scared, but I was just so pleased to be addressing a big problem in my life and a path to, to get my dating life to where I needed to, to get it. So, yeah, so I was super, uh, super excited to, you know, be addressing, addressing this. Now I think we will come on to it. You know, I, I didn't know, um, you know, the dark sides of red pill community and game. I didn't, I didn't know about those things at the time. Um, I, I was just pleased to, yeah, just to just go forward and, and, and start and start approaching. And so, um, yeah, signed up and did, did my, uh, boot camp in mid, 
yeah, 2013 um, with some freelance coaches who were working for a few people at the time. Um, and it was eight hours on a Saturday and eight hours on a Sunday just mm. doing cold approach, which was just like this mental life experience that I'll never, ever forget until I'm an old man. Um, because it, it's just it's just so, you know, weird. Like, well, not weird. Like, it's, it's just an amazing life experience you'll never, you'll never forget. And I think when you go through a massive life event, certainly the way my memory works is you memorize everything, including the smells, the, the sights, just everything. And, and mm. so I, I was approaching like anything. I, I was very happy I didn't really need much pushing and so the, the coaches would get you to approach uh, you know um, it was all daytime street approach so out on the street so girls by themselves uh, groups of two three four six like just absolutely mental and it was a very happy positive time um, how was your first ever approach yeah that's a really good a good question actually I on that course um, they got us to do a few warm-ups to start with <clears throat> and so they'd say look you know go over and say, you know, a girl that you genuinely like looks nice and then just make a compliment or an observation about her and then leave. So I actually went over and approached um, this girl on holiday from Holland and I approached her and she had the silk scarf on. So I just said, hey, look, really nice. I like your scarf. And then, because I was obviously very nervous and just went, right, cheers, I'm, I'm off, see you later. Yeah. Were <laughs> you like looked, standing there like shaking? I was, I was at the start, yeah, and then, yeah. And then, and then walked off. And then I was walking back to where the instructors were because the other students were around. And as I was walking back with one of my fellow students, um, I felt a tug on my arm and I turned around and it was her. And um, she had actually ripped up a bit of an envelope from um, a a card and wrote her name and her number and just gave it to me and just went, you know, hey, here you go. Like, we should have talked longer, but bye. And that was it. And that's when I realized that, like, wow, the power of this stuff. And I thought, oh, I could be quite good at this, Mm. but didn't. I didn't really know, obviously, at the time. And so that was, that was my first one. Um, and then, yeah, for the rest of the weekend, we were just, just flying around, just approaching. And, and just the positive reactions, you know, you're getting from women. And, um, you know, I think the coaches, um, you know, they, they, did, they did have good morals about them. Like, I didn't, I didn't have any issues with, with what they were teaching, you know, even to this day. I mean, the, the ideologies and, and the theories now I have an issue with, uh, for sure. But... Mm. Um, you know, back then and where I was, you know, it, it was fine. And, and, you know, the vast majority of reactions from the women, from not just me, but all the other men was, was, was good. Um, and then, you know, they would film it and you would get feedback on, on that. And, um, and then, yeah, you were basically cast off into the big wide world. And I remember one of my instructors saying, right, congratulations, you've all learned to drive. You now need to keep it up. Yeah. Because if you don't, then you'll lose confidence. You'll lose that skill. <clears throat> the momentum. Well. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then you'll, and you'll regress. Um, and so, and so that was it. Like, and then that, that was the end of it. And it was like a crazy weekend, like mm. never, never forget it. And, and absolutely amazing. I think I finished with like eight phone numbers at the end, like four on the Saturday, four on the Sunday. Um, probably not really good stats considering how many approaches they'd actually done, but still the whole weekend was, was a life changing experience. Yeah. Um, but then that's, that's quite a, a change in results if, you know, how old were you by, by this point? Well? I was 25. I was just about to turn 26. So, I mean, to be then 25, 26, to have gone prior to that, to either not going on any dates or no. going on dates with people that you just weren't attracted to and you were doing it just because it was for the sake of it. So yep. at least you could say that you were going on dates. Yeah. I mean, I, I still think that's such an, an impressive transformation I think is probably the right word for it where you have put the effort into putting yourself out there into a very vulnerable place Mm. you know because let's face it you know if you're walking around on the street and talking to strangers I mean it is so against the social norm anyway yes um you know it's going to be daunting for anyone to to go and do that um I certainly also kind of agree with you like back then I think the the world of pickup or, or day game and stuff was a lot more innocent. Mm. Um, it had a lot more uh, encouragement, I think, for guys who were your typical shy guy who was looking to develop his confidence, not just for the sake of then just being able to date and sleep with as many women as, as they could, but no. they were doing it because they wanted to have relationships. Mm. And I know at least for guys that I met during that time, there might it was easy like nine out of ten were were there because they were looking for relationships yeah. and maybe it was like just the odd one that was like yeah I'm just doing it just to sleep with the girls yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and um, 
and, and I'm sure you probably experienced as well, but once you got that taste of success, um, you obviously want to kind of do it more so and more so. I mean, hell, actually, that you, you obviously did because you've now progressed into, into being a coach. Yes. So what was then the next step for you after you did this, uh, did this weekend training? Mm. Um, you've now tasted the success. Yep. You got yourself eight phone numbers. Um, what, <clears throat> what was next for you after that? Yeah, so um, I just... I just literally, I was, you know, such a good, loyal student. They, I remember my coach saying, you need to go out and dedicate one day a week after your boot camp to really get this skill down. So um, there was 10 weeks to go until Christmas. So I'm like, right, every Saturday, uh, I'm just going out every Saturday. And I was starting to go out with um, one guy from my course, a very rich American guy in his late 30s uh, as, a, as a wingman for that moral support. But um, he started to fade away quite quickly. Mm. And by week two, week three of my 10-week uh, exercise, um, he, he'd just given up. It was just too hard. And he was more of a nighttime nightclub kind of guy. Oh, okay. Just, so it just <clears throat> the, doing the daytime stuff just wasn't for him then? No. He, he was really struggling with he, Yeah, yeah. With just... The, the, the amount of approaches and interactions, it's, it's, it is a lot of work and he, he just couldn't really do that. Mm. The other two guys, one went back to Scotland, the other one went back to Rome. I, I don't know what happened to them. Um, so yeah, quite quickly I realised I was by myself and it was a real decision point of um, if you really want to do this, um, you're going to have to do it by yourself, is what I'm saying to myself. And, um, and you can't rely on another guy or a wingman. And I know many men still struggle with that you know, mm. t- to this day. Um, if their wingman doesn't go out, then they can't, or to the bars or clubs. Yeah, you know. it just puts them off completely. Like, oh, well, if I haven't got someone to go out with, I just won't go out at all. Yeah, And yeah. Then they just essentially neglect their own um, development because mm. they are dependent on, on being around other people. Um, I think it's also interesting what you were saying that you only went out once a week Mm. Um, because certainly I think over the years there have been coaches that try and say to people like go out all every day and you know spend all your life essentially like walking around and talking to people on the street Mm. and don't get me wrong there is an element of if you're dedicating your focus on one particular thing then certainly your learning curve for it does grow tremendously fast Mm. But I then also um, play devil's advocate and say, well, you know, what are you sacrificing to be able to better yourself in one field? Mm. You know, it's very easy, I think, for guys who get into um, the world of um, the dating industry and they do just start neglecting things. And I've known people who have neglected like their friends, their family. Um, they've lost jobs and careers and, and whatnot mm. because of just this obsession with wanting to do street approaches. Yeah. So it sounds like then that very early on, uh, even though, yes, you were only told to just approach uh, or go out and, and do do street approaching just one day a week, you just you, you knew inherently like that you, sh- you don't want to overdo it with with uh with day game or especially at that point maybe in your life as well yeah i yeah i would agree i was probably more balanced than other guys and i think that's certainly also why i did well but i also i was i did become um i'd say like like those guys and I, I did neglect friendships um and, and family um mm. and i i did like cut off hobbies and stuff like this because i was just obsessed by it because i think i had a loose objective about um you know, I wanted a girlfriend, but once I worked out that actually, you know, I can approach and get loads of options and go on instant dates and, and have all this, it was like, mm, okay, maybe the girlfriend thing, like, we'll just, we'll just push yeah. that back a bit. Yeah. Which, which is common, you know, once <clears throat> you realise that your ability to date whoever you want, I'll yeah. say that loosely, whoever you want, um, you do you kind of like test the waters you go out and you try and experience as much of the world as you can it's almost Mm. a bit like if you if someone gave you uh 10 million pound and said right if you've got a bucket list go and do it you just wouldn't hesitate you would just go through this list if even if it was like about a thousand things on this list you would go through them until you've milked everything that you could possibly think of um and yeah and i think that's it's the same with once you've gotten the taste again of success mm. with this suddenly why why settle down yeah why you know i want to be dating supermodels and and this and exotic that. women yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so what what happened next for you once so you obviously then got this uh 
in fact, when you when you were um, when when this process was happening, or when this sort of like phase of your life was happening, mm. um, did other people know that you were doing street approaching? Or? Mm. Yeah, so my my direct family did. Uh, I told them, you know, even before like about it. I showed them videos of it and stuff. Right. So. Um, what, what was their reaction to you saying like, yes, yeah, so I'm going to be spending my weekend walking around <laughs> on the street and talking? Yeah, about yeah, they, they, I think they were, they, they watched the videos and saw them for what they were and were just like, yeah, cool. I think they were happy that I was addressing something that was uh, causing a problem for me mm. um, and yeah, couldn't really see, you know, any harm in it. So I was like, yeah, so this is what I'm going to do. I did tell uh, some close friends. I did tell some friends who lived in my house share um, and some of, the, I think all of them initially supported it, but then when I started bringing girls home, suddenly some of them didn't approve of it. And I think that's just because of, um, like social pecking order, especially in these kind of house, it's almost like teenagers with popularity and stuff. And so for me, um, I know that they kind of put me in the successful career, nice guy box. Um, I wasn't some of the other guys who were like players and that was accepted and the girls liked them because they were players. So then when I start bringing girls home, I'm starting to move into that kind of player box and that's where I started to get a bit of um, just, you know, oh, you know, what are you doing, Dave? You know, and, you know this, that's, that's, yeah, what, yeah, that's yeah. what these other guys do in the house, not you and stuff. So there, there was a little bit of resistance there and I just, in actual fact, in the years ahead, I didn't, I didn't really tell anyone after that, that um, you know, I don't use internet dating. I do, I do cold approach to meet women because I just, I just thought they won't understand. Like it is, it is a mental thing. Like mm. you need to have some really explosive sessions where you know you just go out on your lunch break and you've got a spare thirty minutes and you end up picking up a few phone numbers. Like I'm not going to tell work colleagues. I'm not going to tell friends because they just can't get their head round it. And you'll have your male friends who are on internet dating and they'll be so proud when they get like one phone number after like four months mm. and I, I got three in the space of 20 minutes. I, it, it's not something that they'd be able to wrap their head around and I, you can get judged sometimes negatively for stuff like that. So I just, I didn't really tell people after that and just kind of got on. But um, I mean, in essence, between like 2013 and like 2019, 2020, I was, yeah, basically stuck at this bad boy single level um i did drop off for a relationship in 2014 with a um, brazilian girl or another one um and then i checked out for a year to have a relationship with a really nice polish girl um so i wasn't out all the time but mm. most of the time i was and i i was addicted to um short-term dating fun you know and it's, it's not necessarily actually from from street approach either because when when you are you know um confident guy from this you i found you know my job was benefiting because of my confidence then i started to get promoted started to get more money yeah. then i you know i bought my own house in london and then worked out that oh i should probably upgrade my fashion sense and got some help with that so i started to just become a bit more of a high value man in all areas and then that's when i found that i would go to house parties and women would approach me or i'd be in a shop and getting served by uh, a nice girl and I, I knew from the skills of social skills I'd learned that she was making subtle advances so then I would just say hey you know let's go out another time and write your phone number on her and receipt mm. and 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 therefore you're not even going out approaching it. The, the women are actually starting to come to you as well so um, I was I was stuck in in that space and I I'd, I'd then funnily enough started to become uh, anxious again I started to feel uncomfortable um, and I, it was, <clears throat> I think a lot of that was coming from what I'd been taught. And this is where I am critical of, of, of game and the red pill community is that I was taught lines. I was taught a system yeah, of this is, yeah, stuff, this yeah. is how you get a woman. And this is not something that I, I don't, I don't teach this. And in, in if, if anyone decides to work with me in my terms and conditions, I say, I don't teach uh, mm. day game, night game, pick up. Um, and, and there's three key reasons as to why and, and the one just for this topic is that it is a system it's a system that doesn't care who you are and I, I don't I don't agree with that and it's very uh, easy to market if you are because yeah, it doesn't teach people to develop a personality no um, I, I mean there's even guys that I know over the years who have said to me that they've been bored of saying the exact same things on the dates and then I've said to them, or, or challenged them, and said, well, why don't you say something different? <laughs> yeah. And they say, well, because that's all I know what to say to build attraction. Mm -hmm -hmm. And I say, but you're not 
bringing yourself out in that yeah. you know so it's i i absolutely agree yeah that that is the the dangers i think with pickup is that if you're just learning lines and routines i think at the start it's a good crutch because it just sort of gets a guy who is incredibly nervous to just have already a plan of what to say and it's like a tried and tested thing mm. so then it works but if they don't remember that it you have to bring out your personality at some point. You know, you have to be voicing your own opinions, not ones that have essentially been passed on to you from someone else. So you know that you're going to get, uh, if you say X, she'll say Y, and that will result in Z. You know, you need to be developing yourself in a way. Um, and something else you, you said about with uh, the box thing, mm. um, I've always understood it as like a social ladder. Yeah. So, um, like, so I, I had a very similar experience myself where um, growing up, I, I had told friends that, oh, I was doing um, uh, pickup and, and stuff. Again, when it was at the time when it was really cool back in 2009. And I remember my friends who, some were more confident than me, and some were kind of on that same level as me in, in regards to shyness. Um, they didn't like that I was moving up this ladder, that I was suddenly becoming as confident as the confident friends that I had in the group. Yeah, people don't or, like it. Yeah. And people want you to essentially stay where you are because then they understand their own value in the group or, mm. or loosely, we'll say, in society as well. But they understand where they are in that hierarchy uh, above you. And especially if you if they know that you're at the bottom, it makes them feel better about themselves as well, knowing that they are above you. It doesn't necessarily mean that they might treat you as someone who's below but it's just the fact that when you do challenge that level and you try and move up that you just want to be someone more confident or more sociable Hmm. that if that's not what they're agreeing to by being your friend then they can turn against you and in fact I lost all of my friends at the time Hmm. because not because I was I can honestly say I was at the bottom of the chain I was Hmm. at the bottom of that ladder um, and the moment I was then just able to say to them, like, oh, let me show you something. Can I walk over and just talk to two girls? And they were like, hell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it was just, you know, for them it was a, a, a bit of a shock. But, yeah, they didn't, they didn't like it. So, no, so point being is, yeah, I, I kind of understand it as this, this ladder, and the higher you go up the ladder, then certainly you start um, becoming above other people Mm. and it's whether or not they like you moving up this ladder if they want you to move up it um which certainly you do find i think there are guys or or there are communities in the world where you know they want you to be the better version of yourself and they'll they'll essentially push you up the ladder yeah uh keeping with the metaphor of it but um yeah I, i i think though that there are guys who they don't really get that support and whether it be their friends or family, you know, they tend to sort of keep them down. Mm. Um, I'd be curious, what, what would you say to guys who are uh, in that that bubble of, you know, they want to be more confident, but they are around people that aren't allowing them to essentially be better versions of themselves? Mm. Well, they need to get new friends. <laughs> <laughs> Simply better, yeah. yeah. Just just go buy some. I mean, that's, yeah. that's it. No. Um, yeah, I, I think if you are influenced by if you're spending a lot of time around people who are not doing what you want to do or they don't share the same views as you and you're going to start changing and addressing things, then start doing that and see how they react. And if they do start reacting that way, then, yeah, I mean, simply you do need to start hanging out with different people because if you are fixing, say, your dating life or something like that, it's a massive, huge undertaking and very Mm. exciting and emotional. And if you need to talk to people about that, Honestly, and if you can't or you feel that they're going to crush you or squash you or they're just not going to want to hear about it, then then it's a big thing for you. And, and you can't, if you can't talk to them, then you're going to have to go and hang out with people who are on other you know, self-development opportunities like a community or something like that. So, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah, so this is where then at least <clears throat> I, I do recommend that guys should get into the community, but they have to kind of go into it with the right kind of mindset that they can't, uh, as much as it's easier said than done, not allow themselves to get too consumed with the idea of not just meeting and dating women, Mm. but letting it consume their lives as well and forgetting that, okay, if they're now developing this confidence, 
they need to be doing other things in their lives to kind of balance it out. Because really, that's just what makes someone more attractive. You know, if they're someone who goes on holidays all the time or they've had some incredible experiences that they can talk to people about, then that is what can make someone attractive. But mm. besides being able to know how to flirt and seduce someone uh, as well. So so what, what happened next then? So you were caught... Um, in the, the dilemma of like now you've got the ability to go on and date whoever you want to. Mm. Um, but it does sound like though that you were at least still looking for relationships. Mm. Um, even if they were um, like just a year or so longer at a time, but you were at least still trying to uh, settle down with someone mm. by the sounds of it. Yeah, I... That's when it. So yeah, after the first few years, and I started to feel quite anxious about, um, you know, what is it I'm, I'm doing, and and just wondering about the bigger picture with with the whole, <clears throat> you know, red pill community and stuff. That I'd already achieved quite a lot in my single life, and was just like, oh well, what's what's next? I, I didn't really know. So, um, luckily, I've I've got some very good friends who are a few years older than me and a few years more progressed in life. So they've they have, um, you know, long term relationships, but they were. I call them like natural bad boys. They didn't need to pay to go on some course or do anything. They were just like naturally good with women. Mm. So I'd, 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 I'd luckily, I'm very lucky that I had like one or well, two friends actually that were like that. So I'd speak to them because I I liked them and aspired to be like them. And so they were doing things I wasn't, which was having, you know, relationships and stuff. So I would, I would have chats with them and then kind of, you know, they knew everything about what I was doing and stuff. And... Yeah, as you say, you could you could start to see those signs that I was trying to transition into a relationship, and then mm. and then buggering it up, and then going you know back on back on the wagon of uh, of cold approach and having a good single life, and then um, it it really came to a head with all of this um, in my early thirties. So by this point, I've got rid of all the lines and the structure and stuff. So I'm bringing more of my personality in, you know, forgetting the the theory and stuff. So that's cool. But it, in my early thirties, I I was. I was I was having a lot of like casual relationships, which would then naturally come into a relationship, and it was the girl leading that that she she wanted a long term relationship with me, and this is where I'm probably really quite most critical of of the red pill community in that it doesn't advocate long term relationships at all. It, it in some cases in the writing in the in the books and also in the implication of a long term monogamous relationship is a bad thing mm. you know and 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 sometimes they say that but more it's more it's just the way it's written and, and the way it's talked about is you know if you carry on going out with a girl you know she's going to want a long term relationship you know, you know, of course, you know. yeah and, and and then and then you know the whole cha- you know following material about you're going to sacrifice your freedom you're going to have this and that and it's far better to be single and far better to have all these choices and stuff like this and and i I was very susceptible to that. I think uh, you can be very impressionable at any age if you don't have much experience in it or you don't know what you're doing. And so from a casual and short-term point of view, I was really bossing it. I was a real master. And there's a lot of peer <clears throat> pressure, I think, that goes into it as well. Yes. Um, I think when you're in very male-populated communities, it's. It, it, I think it becomes quite apparent that it only takes like one stronger voice to suddenly influence the rest or that it creates like a a ripple effect yeah then suddenly if one person says oh it should be like this then maybe another five people say oh yeah it should be like this and then it just sort of ripples through the hundreds if not thousands so yeah yeah no i agree i was i was was hanging out with with not many men but a few that were you know cold approaching like me as well and Mm. and they just hadn't developed that that second half of this whole story i was trying to but 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 struggling and um i was yeah i was my my expertise in this area was all red pill documentation and stuff and and this is where i am quite against a lot of the things in in this space and and this community and so um i i was having in my early 30s i'm in australia by this point and i was getting to a stage where i'd be seeing a girl for several months you know like the, some of these women like any man would give their right arm to have a relationship with and here I am basically toying around with them mm. you know, like a cat and a mouse um, and it you know I, I, I did I did cause you know quite a lot of emotional upset because I didn't I didn't know what I was doing I didn't I, I didn't know what to do in, in this situation and and because I was influenced strongly with a relationship is a bad thing yeah and this adversarial nature of red pill which is what I feel it is 
um, that I, I didn't know what to do. And so I would just kind of do what the, the books and the theory would tell me in that once they're kind of going for a relationship, you've kind of hit the road, the, the end of the road, and that you just need to tell them to, 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 to sod off. And, and, mm. and, and that's what I would do. And then I would miss being around them. So then I'd start that relationship up again and then go down a second run of, of a casual relationship, which the girl would do. Um, not all of them, but some of them would. And then, and then you're just building attachments with these people and you don't, you don't really know what you want. And I think that's also something that's not, not good at all. And so, mm. you know, my motto for David Thorpe is dating through honesty. And, and certainly the first thing that I do with men is really try and establish what it is that they want to achieve and really spend some time with them to really iron that out. Because if they say, oh, I just want some short-term film or I want a, a girlfriend, I, it's, I wouldn't just take that at face value. I want to really understand what's going on and why. And that is something that was glaringly missing from my boot camp. I mean, it was just sold as, here's how to approach women, just do this. Yeah. But there's here's so the, much... Here's the system yeah, to, just to use go it. through. Yeah. Yeah. But there's so much that was missing from that. And I wasted years um, just doing oh. hit it and quit it, short-term you know, dating. And, and look, I had a fantastic single life. I, you know, it's really amazing, you know, going around the world, having these confident skills and, you know, being a red-blooded man in his 20s and early 30s, why not? But yeah, I was, I was really struggling. And then, and then when it came to um, my uh, girlfriend, uh, soon to be fiance, um, I, was in, I was in this similar place where I, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, started off as you know dating and this kind of casual relationship <clears throat> and it i 'd already been through this phase several times with with women that were just absolutely amazing and who who cared for me greatly and i I was really quite upset at how I was behaving and so um, with 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 my girlfriend at the time I, well it, she wasn 't a girlfriend we were casual and I was having to just figure out what it is that I wanted and so i I said to her i need I need some time away. Um, which obviously was was not not great for her at all, um, and I, I I just took myself away, and I I just was at home um, in Sydney, and I I just thrashed out. I just had a lot of alone time, um, reading different types of books, not Red Pill, um, but also just taking myself away and just doing a lot of self reflection with my notebook and pen, and just writing writing out right you know screw a lot of the stuff that I've been taught or influenced by who is it that I see myself being in the future? Mm. What is it that I want? Do I want a monogamous relationship with one woman? Because that is clearly not promoted in the community I come from. Um, and I, I just, I just thrash this out, right? Yeah, I definitely want um, a long-term relationship that is monogamous, right? What are the other questions that women are probably going to ask me that I need to know the answers of? Or people will just ask me, you know, do you ever want to get married? You know, you need to know these answers, I think. And whether you do or you don't, fine, but don't sit on the fence so I just was like, yeah, you know, I've, um, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, however, if I do do that, I'll want a financial agreement, a prenup as well, because that's just something that I want for me because I, I have got my own assets over time. So that I want, you know, this, what's my view on children, you know, sorting all this stuff out and just working out what, what a good relationship would look like for me and what it is that I want. And then from that, once I'd cleared my head in, in the space of two weeks, a lot of self-reflection and, and ditching a lot of this red pill stuff, it's like, right, I now know what I want. Yeah. And then with um, my girlfriend, um, you know, bless her, like I basically told her I need some time off. And how many men have said that? Never to be seen or heard again. And then I just, I just you know, text her and said, you know, I want to meet. Let's have a conversation about this. And then I, we met up and it was, you know, me giving a bit of a monologue, but it was like uh, just me proud to reel off my, my newfound belief system and that I do want a relationship with you and I do want these things. And I think if you can be confident and assertive as a man in what you want, that's fantastic. And again, my motto, dating through honesty, is you telling women what you're about or what you want whether it is short term, long term, whatever it is, just being honest and telling them what what you want, and just getting that honesty across, um, and they'll either go for it or they won't. It sounds like then that um, having that time alone, and then rethinking about what you wanted in life. I mean, certainly in regards <laughs> to like relationships, mm. um, it, it did you the world of good then, really. Mm. Um, so how, how long of a, how long were you did you have that time alone for to really sort of think about this and then what was um, well, I suppose it, it's kind of obvious then what 
uh, what your missus had said if, if, you're, <laughs> if you're thinking of uh, proposing to her. Yeah. So, um, so what do you, so you just you read but you see say just you just read books then to um, that that helped you to process mm. and think about things that you wanted to do. Yeah, um, I think one book I, I did read a few books. I can't remember. There was one uh, models Mark Mark Manson, which is is you know really good straight down the middle. Uh, just conversations with with um, my family and with my two you know close friends um, who are in settled relationships and, and stuff like that. And I think what was good is um, you know having conversations with family and also with with these two guys. It was just focusing on um, you know me bringing my you know belief old belief system that I've come from the street at Red Pill and all this stuff and and just trying to work out, you know, my reservations about relationships, which was influenced by this material. Um, and then them presenting, you know, another side, which I needed to hear. Because again, if you're hanging out with single men all the time, then you're not really going to get that mm. argument coming across. So I think that was good. And then, and then yeah, just self-reflection. It was about two weeks of time, um, you know, making notes and, and working out what's, what's right for me. And that I do, um, you know, I do, I do want... Um, a relationship you know with with one <clears throat> with one girl and then and then yeah just really pleased to have reached a conclusion that I'm happy with in in my gut it feels right I feel settled and then having a conversation um with with my girlfriend she didn't really have any questions for me it was me that asked to have the chat mm. and then just to kind of give out this uh very honest answer I mean because that, that I mean that's such a a, a strengthening bond anyway to have a break, get back together, and then say to someone, "You know what? I I want to be with you. Mm. Um, let's let's make it work, yes. or whatever." So, so what what did that look like then after after you had that chat? Because I, I can't assume that um, suddenly it was just like, "Oh, right, the world's back to normal again." It, it yeah. probably took maybe some. Uh, did it take any adjusting to to kind of get back into that that new sort of um, relationship? I think not not really. I think I I just went through more personal development in in a relationship I mean the longest relationship I'd had prior to this was about a year so um when once we kind of restarted things and, and we're now properly in a relationship it was you know really really good times it still is there isn't there wasn't really any adjustment but it was more it was more for me and my learning to you know I'm not I'm not going out on the street anymore so that that was strange yeah, it's always nice not to be going out. Mm. Uh, nice to be at home and settled. But that that was strange. That was just a change. I didn't I didn't miss it. But I saw some of my friends going out, and obviously they'd come back with some funny stories and things like that. So you, sometimes you'd be like, oh, you know, that's pretty cool. But it was more just just a, a, a journey of self development for me. You know, especially as I, then my relationship went beyond one year, and then you know we 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 moved in together and and just things like that. Obviously, I'd not really done that before, so. That that was what, what was that like for you? Yeah, that was that was it was funny actually because the first first few weeks was was a big adjustment because I was quite apprehensive, like not really sure what was going to happen. Yeah, um, your own space, is yeah, now your own being space, shared freedom. with someone else. Yeah, it yeah. is. So that that was that was a, a big period of adjustment, and I think um, another another concept which I think is very skewed in this industry is frame. You know, people talk about frame, and I I define it as it's your. It's your reality, and I know a lot of dating coaches define it as, as lots of other things. Um, and yeah, I think they tend to characterise it as well as being a character. Like, like you need to be in this certain method acting kind of Dominance, mode, yeah. yeah, to to be able to keep people's attention or, or yeah. people pe- people reacting to you in a certain way. Yes, and you you leading a you leading a situation. So you either um, you have. The, the way other dating coaches talk about it is you, you have the frame or you don't have the frame. So if you've got the frame, you're leading an interaction or you're leading something and the girl's just willing, willingly following you. And if you mm. don't have the frame, then she does. And um, it's, For me, it's more about your, your reality and where you are. And I think um, there are some crossovers with, with that theory about you do need to be leading your own life and, and your own situations and stuff. And again, coming from the Red Pill community, if you're not leading the frame you're failing, you're not doing well, and that's mm. a big problem. Um, and this is something that was just having to like iron out during living together. So for me, coming from where I came from, I must have the frame at all times, 100% all the time. Mm. And so when we moved in together, I was like leading the supermarket shop 
we are buying mackerel tonight. We yeah. are doing this. We are doing this because that's where I came from and that's, that's what I thought um, I had to do. And I think um, that kind of ironed out a bit in that um, it is okay not to have the frame or not to live in your own reality and live in someone else's every now and then. I think as a man, you need to um, live in and lead your frame for the, for your life and the things that are important to you, such as you know generally where you're going in life, the things you want to achieve. Yeah. Um, and you know if you want to live in a certain country or be with a certain woman or, or have a relationship in a certain way, the the big the big things. I think as a man, you need to lead that frame and own and own that frame and. If you can find a woman who shares that view with you and wants to join you on that journey, because there's good things for her, or she kind of likes the sound of some of the things you're up to as well, then then that's cool. I think if um, a woman is off doing X, Y, and Z, or or, or anyone really, um, I've seen it in you know workspaces, in corporate spaces where, and someone, a guy is not um, living in his frame and he's living in someone else's, and that's not what he wants to do, mm. then he's not not being honest to himself. And then, you know, if something goes wrong with that relationship or with that employer and then they just ditch him, then he's just spent time doing someone else's thing and that's kind of not good. So mm. there, there was a period of adjustment in the relationship, but um, apart from a few minor things like, yeah, leading the supermarket shop for what am I going to barbecue tonight? <laughs> um, that, was, that was about it. So, yeah, it's, um, I'm really pleased where I am now. I think I was dangerously at a cusp of being stuck down the path of being a single man forever um, and not being honest with myself um, and just chasing more and more women because that's what I think I needed to do based off a community of others and I think um, you know when you look at a lot of the people that, that taught me or that were around at the time and you look at where they are now are they good role models are they men that I want to be like or are they men that most people would want to be like no they're not um, they've uh, they've they've gone broke they uh, are you know they're completely lost yeah. down this alleyway of 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 cold approach because that's what they think is the right thing they don't have much going on in their life and that's why this has filled such a void mm -hmm. um, they are a bit weird a bit strange or they start in a country trying to help men, or they become dating coaches, that's even more funny. And, and then they weird out, and then they go live in Vietnam and try and find themselves and stuff, or, or live out of a backpack. And in, and in the worst and, and most saddest of, of, of cases, um, you know, they, they, they kill themselves. And I, I know two men that have done that. You know, I know you, three. Yeah, in, in that space. And I, I just think it's absolutely awful. And, um, you know, this this community, you know, that I, I was a part of and I, I do not identify with it now is, look, there's, there's good elements about, you know, that it is a, a fabulous skill to be able to approach and to give value to another woman and be able to start a relationship and that's what happened with me. But there is a dark side to it as well and, mm. and, and you know, at the time when you start, you don't see that or you don't know that and you look at these coaches as, as, as heroes and little do you realise that they've got quite serious problems or they've got their own, you know, um, demons that, that they're dealing with. And I think, um, you know, I got sucked into that and I, I saved myself through my own self-reflection. And I think the other thing that saved me was my uh, friends and family and particularly my relationships with women, mm -hmm. um, my mom and my sister particularly, because I had that decades of experience of, of you know, positive, happy relationships with women that was really different to you know the whole game and red pill community and and a good family life which i came from and the whole game and red pill were very different and actually over time became like loggerheads like two opposing magnets and i was stuck in the middle trying to be both i wanted to maintain and be the david that i was but at the same time that didn't help me get to where i needed to go so i had to mm. put my foot into the red pill camp but then I, w I went way too far on that side and then I was having to try and figure it out and it was two big opposing forces and it just like, yeah, split like the atom and then mm. and then luckily I ended up where I did. So I am very lucky and fortunate and pleased that I managed to sort myself out because Christ knows where I'd be now. Yeah. Well, certainly 
mental health in this industry is I think just overlooked so much, which is kind of why I've put the channel together mm. anyway. Um, but you know, and even on top of what you were saying, I think a lot of guys who get into this, they tend to develop um, a lot of uh, addictive personality traits, um, which does then lead them to be very narcissistic, sociopathic, maybe even psychotic uh, as well, because if you're constantly pushing those social boundaries, and you're not really fitting yourself in society which tells you where the line is, mm. which you shouldn't then be crossing anymore, or at least you know, like, okay, right, this should be my limit, um, guys do tend to go over the edge. And, you know, and in, like, the 80-plus dating coaches that I've worked with over the years, I'd say a very good portion of them, I've had to give them counselling. I've had to certainly give them dating advice because <laughs> they've just completely broken down... I've had a lot who have like sat there and cried to me mm. um, and a lot of them are in bad places in their lives and they've all maybe at very early on in their, their dating career, they've been sold the idea that meeting and dating and sleeping women is going to solve all your problems and clearly it, it, it doesn't. No. And, you know, and, and something that you'd also said, which, which, you know, I also agree with, like, yeah, at some point, you know, the guys have to mature. They have to kind of realize that, OK, this is a rabbit hole that I can't keep going down anymore because now I have to think about where my future is going to be within this. Mm. Um, otherwise, they can certainly get trapped. And, and I'd go as far to say is that they then don't grow up. No. They are stuck in this sort of like horny teenager kind of phase that can go for so long that they just don't know how to get out of it because it's just become their identity. Mm. And that I, I think is dangerous because then if you're so far out of society, it's very difficult to get back in, mm. you know, and I've used, I've, I've loosely used the example of like, you know, when people sadly go homeless and then when they've, you know, it starts off like it's a very strange and surreal experience for them. But maybe as years go by, if they haven't opted to sort the, their lives out and they just get used to not being part of society anymore, it's very difficult for them to get back, back into in. it. Yes, yeah. You know, so not comparing dating coaches to homeless people, but, you know, but it, it can be that same kind of mentality that then... You know, their entire existence just revolves around just dating women. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think just with that alone, it's a very hollow and empty goal to have. And then what usually happens is that this addictive personality that they develop, they tend to develop a lot of bad drinking habits. I know of many coaches over the years who are addicted to drugs. Yep. Um, and then even then I've known some who have nearly overdosed and died mm. because the, um, the addiction to wanting to get an even better high from the lifestyle, the rock star lifestyle that they think they're living, um, has just enticed them to keep doing more and more because they need that extra high or that high just isn't the same anymore. Or I've known coaches over the years who um, they've gone a very dark, they had gone down very dark paths where for them to uh, get a kick out of dating, they purposely go for women who were in relationships. Yeah, married. Yeah. Or married or yeah, something, yeah, yeah. or have kids and families, <laughs> yeah. you know. And, and I think that's just an incredibly dark kind of like path mm. for them to go on. So I suppose just, just bringing it uh Back to back to you again. So now that you've you've had all these experiences, now you've uh, at what point then did you decide that you know what I want to be a coach and mm. I want to kind of make a change for guys in the uh, in this community? Mm. Well, it's been something I've been thinking about for a long time. I, I started getting offers to work with other uh, dating companies as as soon as about a year after my after my boot camp because uh, I stayed in touch with my instructors and then other guys as well. Um, but at the time, like I, I was more focused on, on, on myself and, and just wasn't really ready to do that. Um, I did, I did help guys on and off, um, for free. Um, and I, I did actually quite enjoy that. But at the time I was more engaged in my railway career, which was going really, really well. And I really, really liked that. Um, and then I started thinking about 
um, helping guys and doing my own thing in just before COVID. Um, but again, at the time, just just had other things going on, and I also I also wasn't fully clear on what my beliefs were. I knew I wasn't happy with uh, the red pill community, and in, in a lot of ways, I wasn't happy or comfortable with 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 game and I'd obviously dropped that to bring in my more personality, but I wasn't able to articulate those views like I am today. Mm. So there was a lot of like partially developed ideas and thoughts that I hadn't really got sorted in my head. And I, and therefore I think you do need to know what you're talking about and what you believe in before you start doing coaching. So I, I wasn't, I just wasn't really ready. I wanted to, but I wasn't really ready. And then obviously COVID hit and then, um, and then after that, and it was, it was around this time last year, actually in July that I just thought, no, I really, I really um, want to do this because I'd helped um, two guys who were uh, clients of mine, which just came through contacts. And um, one is now uh, married with a baby on the way, so he's going to appear on my channel soon. And, and then there's another guy who I helped who was in his early 20s, and now he's in a relationship with, with his dream woman. And I spent a lot of time with those guys for about three to six months, I think. Mm. And so I got a lot of satisfaction out of that. And I thought, well, actually... I do enjoy this and it's so great to see them do well. And I think um, around July last year, I thought, no, I need to really work out, is this what I want to do? Any reservations I have, I clear up my thinking around this. It was a very similar exercise to what I did about, am I ready for a relationship? Just basically the same again. And just went through that and was like, no, definitely, I want to, I want to do this. And so uh, that was around this time last year. And then obviously I spoke to yourself uh, about YouTube coaching which you should definitely hire a cameraman Dan. Um, and that was great. And, and then, yeah, from there, that, that was basically it. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how I started, really. Yeah. So what would you recommend to guys who <clears throat> are looking to work on their dating lives? So maybe they've either just come out of a relationship. Maybe you've got different examples or scenarios for mm. these. But, you know, what would you advise for guys who have just come out of relationships or have maybe been single for a while or maybe um, even with how like you started that you were that shy guy mm. and you're kind of like you were looking for something that you could do to sort of change the way and how you interacted with people. Mm. What would you recommend to, to people? Um, I think the first thing that they would need to do once they've taken some time off from, from their relationship or, or whichever way they're starting is to, there's, there's two things I think you need really to, to succeed. One is to have the mindset that you can actually change an area of your life, particularly dating. Mm. And the second part is just do the work to follow through on that mindset. I think if you can do those two things, then you can achieve what you want in your dating life, no matter how far behind you are or how far away you are from from that. And then I think from there, um, focusing on, um, you know, building yourself, assuming that you're not um, uh, not very well-rounded in, say, certain areas. So the usual characters of, um, you know, fitness and fashion, um, diet, trying to be more social with lots of different exercises, um, focusing on career or their own business, um, hobbies and things like that. It, there, it, that is the, the, the foundation for doing well with women. And I think that's why I hit the ground running with cold approach or whichever method you choose to meet women, whether it be internet dating or cold approach. The reason I think I did well at like step two was because step one was already kind of pretty much sorted for mm. me back then. Um, and I remember my instructor saying to me in 2013, like I did so well because everything was already there for me. I just needed to be shown the way to meet women. And so I think having that solid foundation there. Now, if you are a guy who has got you know, a good career or you're happy in that, um, you can dress yourself and you've got some hobbies and you are happy to take some time away, then you've got the foundation there already and then step two is um, yeah, going out approaching or internet dating and setting up a killer profile. And then from there, I mean, that that's actually, I'd say, probably a, a bit easier. Like, it doesn't take that long to learn how to approach or to do internet dating well, to then um, learn how to text um, and then obviously date from there. Um, and then either if, you know, you are at a stage where you just want to have some short-term fun, then fine. Or if you are wanting that long-term relationship, then you should know what you're looking for from that exercise that you did right at the start about what kind of 
woman do I want a long-term relationship with? And it can be done in quite a short space of time as well. Mm. Um, but I know a lot of guys are quite scared about that or they've got reservations about themselves or society. And, um, you know, we've got, you know, uh, a lot of extreme <clears throat> feminist views out in society as well, which is probably another a topic for another day, which I've, I've done a video on reading a feminist book and reviewing that. Um, it, it is hard for guys right now. I think there's so much in the media and perception and social media that's telling them not to fix their dating lives or um, all women are going to hate them and things like that. So it's, it is hard, but I think that, that kind of process to, um, to, to, to get a relationship or, or have that kind of dating life you want, it, it can be done. You mm -hmm. just need the mindset. And then you, you do have to put some work in. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. And um, how would you recommend guys go about uh, taking action in a, in a sensible way with working on their dating? Because I think, well, I think you'll, you'll probably agree that, you know, there are too many guys in the community who will say, like, you know, just go out every day, you know. But what would you say is then a sensible dedication for a guy to be able to work on this this field in regards to cold approach you mean yeah yeah um yeah i mean you i mean so similar to what what to what i did really i think it depends on your city as well right i think um if you went out all day in sydney and all night like i would say that's probably too much because uh sydney's quite small right so mm -hmm. but i think you do need to dedicate certain amounts of time to to cold approach and I know some people think it's weird but then they'll but then they'll happily look at a guy who'll spend two hours a night sat on his sofa on tinder swiping away mm. I mean it's street tinder it's cold approach you see someone you see someone I don't like I do like right I'm gonna go and match with them and then talk with them so yeah I think doing if you're in a bigger city like even you know London doing an all day you know you and me film that like that's that's fine but not I wouldn't I wouldn't say every day and I wouldn't I wouldn't put numbers behind it. I think some people are motivated by goals and objectives, you know, and I think if that if you set yourself a goal of doing a certain amount of approaches per week, I'd say not per day but per week, if that motivates you to just get going, mm. then that's fine. But if you don't do X amount or whatever, it doesn't I wouldn't say it matters because you're just gonna feel bad if you don't and, and so on. So I think dedicating one day a week or if you're in a smaller city, a few half days a week and that's it. But you absolutely have to maintain that base foundation of who you are as a person by not sacrificing your job. Um, and that's something that I felt the pull of with the red pill and game community in London is I felt a lot of guys were being influenced that way by the instructors who had given up their jobs to do this as their full time yeah. job. The back Just to go all in with it. Yeah, and, monk yeah. mode, like, yeah, yeah have, uh, have a backpack and some boots and go around Europe and live like a pauper. Um, that I don't know, and I don't, I don't agree with that at all. It should be a part of your life. It can be very exciting and very engaging because it's like, wow, cool, you know, when previously you had nothing going on. Mm. But you absolutely have to maintain those family and friend relationships and stuff. Because a, a phrase I've coined that I'm quite proud of is the battle for the street is won or lost before you've even arrived. Mm. And that is because of who you are when you turn up. So if you are unbalanced and a bit strange and you have not got those areas of your life sorted like the family the friends the career the hobbies and you turn up on the street and expect things to go well then i think you'll find they won't mm. whereas if you are happy individual and you have got all of those areas of your life sorted when you turn up on the street the battle will already be won you'll get yeah. lots of positive reactions to you and i think that's why i always did well um generally and and other guys did not and their social skills or street skills probably in some cases were better than mine mm. but because I dropped this whole you know system and started getting my life experience across in interactions because I'm well traveled and I've read a lot of books and stuff I could get that across in my interactions and I think that made it organic that made it a conversation that was definitely from me <clears throat> a girl's not going to have a conversation like that with anyone else and I think that's 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 really important. Um, and yeah, I lost I lost my way with that. You know, I became addicted to it. And you know, as, as we just talked about, I, I I apart from my job, I basically quit everything else mm. to to just do it. And then and then my results went down. And then women would ask me, so what is what is it you do outside of work? And I I didn't know what to say. And that's when I knew I had a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Hmm. I should I should probably go back to what I was doing earlier. Yeah, and there's certainly I know of coaches that have almost lied about what they they do as well to also just try and avoid yeah. um, that particular uh, uh, question. And you know, for me, um, what I think the industry essentially needs to evolve into. Um, besides removing the stigma for, for guys that are scared to actually go and work with uh, a dating coach to help them with their dating lives. But I think also guys need to have more of this mentality of like when you're going to come into the dating community, it's not one that you are meant to be permanently staying in forever. You need to learn everything that you need to from it and then you need to go back to your normal life per se and now carry these skills with you mm. so if you are going out and you are learning to be more sociable and you're going to groups and events and stuff you've got the skill to be able to uh make friends or uh to flirt with a stranger that you might be attracted to that guys don't need to be spending all of their time no. um certainly um uh stopping women on the street um, I, I've certainly known people who, you know, yes, it's good that they go out on a weekly basis to go and practice, but they are still in the exact same spot a year or two later. And there have been many occasions that I've been walking through Oxford Street and I've still seen them standing, yeah. you know, near Bond Street Station, saying the exact same lines that they were saying like a year before. Mm-hmm. And, um, and and it, it, it's no surprise that they're not getting the results that they want because they just seem to be doing the exact same thing over and over. Um, So I I suppose one of the other, another question that that I've got um, that you you did mention earlier about with that you, you know, when you used to be going out with a friend Mm. and then he sort of quit and then it was up to you to make the decision of, right, do I carry on 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 my own or should I kind of like not go out or whatever? Mm. Um, What advice would you have for people that are uh, in, in regards to doing either solo practice um, out and about mm. or what would you recommend for them to do and uh, in regards to like looking after like a wing mm. um, if they're going out with someone else because um, something that I know I've experienced when I've gone out with uh, people over the years you know, you might be spending a lot of time with them if you're going out and doing approaching, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're your friends no. because you can't just have this commonality of like, oh yeah, we both like dating women. Oh yeah, so that makes us friends here. Um, I do believe guys need to, if, if guys want to develop friendships in this industry, then they also need to be going off and doing other things. Even if it's something as simple as going to the cinema or bowling yes. together, they need to be doing more social activities besides just constantly talking about how you're going to meet and meet yes. women all the time. <laughs> so yeah. so what, what would you say just for guys who um, are getting into the community or maybe they've been in it for a while, what kind of recommendations would you give to them in regards to um, soloing so that they don't become that weird guy? Yep. And for guys that are going out um, in groups or, or with friends or, or, or I'll, say, I'll say wings in abbreviation, mm. um, what would you recommend for them to do to also keep um, their, uh, keep, keep doing what they're doing, but in, in also uh, a healthy way? Yeah. I think for the, for the solo, if you're going out cold approaching solo and internet dating is not for you, then to... It, it, I mean, just looking at the reality of it, it's, it's probably the hardest thing you can do. Um, it's a very unique experience that most men will never experience in their lives. So I think having some appreciation that you are basically the most ballsy person out at any time, either daytime or nighttime, if you're going into bars by yourself, then that's cool as well. Um, it, uh, just a quick appreciation that it's an enormously challenging situation that you're in. I think one thing that I would do to kind of normalize it is... I would um, have an errand or something else that I needed to do. Like Mm. genuinely, I needed a new pair of jeans. And so if it was on a Saturday, then I would know where the Levi store was. And then I would get off the metro or tube station quite far away and I would go out. And I I might not have seen a tourist spot for quite a while. So I'll add that onto the itinerary as well. So I'm, I'm on my way and I've genuinely got a purpose. I do absolutely need to get some jeans. 
Um, I don't have 500 pairs of jeans. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and then I'm going to go via this tourist spot because I really like London, for example, right? And, and, then, and then you're going along. And, and that way, when you start a, a, an interaction or a conversation with someone, you're, again, being honest in everything you do is, I'm just out shopping for some jeans at the moment, but, you know, I think you look really nice. And then striking up an honest conversation, you've approached someone you genuinely want to want to meet, and then you know you get those jeans, and then and then you and then you go back, right? And that's 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 that. If you're on holiday, basically the same thing. I would always just do uh, when whenever I'm in a city or about to go, Google top ten things to do in Budapest, and then I would see all these cool things. Well, oh, you know, that looks really good. And then I would just go off and and spend my my first day. Actually, I'd literally walk an entire city and and do and do that. So, I think I think that for the if you're going out with with a wingman. Um, yeah, I agree with your point. I had that many times. There were some certain wingmen I went out with for years. I didn't even know their surname. Like that, that's like you say, all we do is yeah. just talk about women and dating and, 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 and what's going on in, in that space. And I think um, hanging around someone that you genuinely get on with, and if you don't really know, because you haven't really done that, then yeah, just go out for drinks or do something you want to do, like go out for a big steak dinner or mm. or go bowling or or just do some hobbies and stuff. And if and if you find that actually you don't really like them or they don't really want to do that because they just want to stick to approaching all the time, then that is a bit strange. And then I would not want to hang around with them anymore yeah. um, and good, and just do some other stuff with them because I think if you can, then 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 yeah, you you make a, a friend out of it as well. And it's it's just I mean look. You talk about this, you know, community and all this jazz, right? But for me, like, if you just think about it, like, it's just different words layered onto something that's already been there for a long time. Mm. Like, our dads, right, 1980s, like, what a time to be alive. They wouldn't even call it wingman. It's just, they're single, they've got some friend from work or from somewhere else who is single like them. They get on, they've established that bond before, and what would they do? There was obviously no internet dating, cold approach in the day, probably what well, wasn't, wasn't really a thing. Mm. <clears throat> they would just go out to bars in London or Essex or whatever, and they would, you know, do the old cheesy chat line. Yeah. And that's What's what a girl did. like you do in a place, <laughs> in a place like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that was it. You know, you're, you're called Gillette, you know, the best a man can get. <laughs> And all this. <laughs> I've not heard that. Yeah, that's, that that's quite good. Yeah. So, you say, but that's that's what they do, right? That's what they did. And then, uh, I suppose they were wingmen, and, and they'd one of them would go and have a chat. And if it didn't work, then they'd go back to their friend and have a laugh, have a laugh about it. But they they went out, they had drinks, but beyond chasing women at night, they they did other things together. They worked together, or they or they did that. And this is no different to that. And I think, you know, especially with some you know mental people that we find out on social media and this feminist movement and all of this that it's it's nothing has changed in in certain scenarios it's just we're just calling it different things mm. and i think i think um yeah like if you if you've got a wingman then hopefully f- doing the back end from our 1980s fathers which is doing some cool stuff together that isn't that will quickly help you find out whether this is someone you want to hang around with or not and it's not a competition as well i think some some guys will have better days and others not and so on and i think um you know, you, it, it depends, like, it, it's entirely down to you, you know, if a guy doesn't really do much and the other one does a lot, then that's fine. As long as the relationship works, then I think, mm. I think that's fine, but it certainly doesn't need to be a, um, a competition. Um, and I think coming from, again, this, you know, the red pill community, it, it is very competitive, it can be very egotistical, and, you know, it's, it, this is where, I, and I think you and me are like, is, is very alike, is it's asking those bigger questions to men, you know, what, what are you doing? What, what, what is it that you want to do what, what where do you want to go with all of this those questions need to be ans- answered by them because if they don't then they're just chasing women for chasing sake and in some cases just to prove a point to another man like you know you're going to get old at some point like is this what you want to do all this time like mm. ask yourself that and go out with people that you find fun and, and that you get along with yeah so <clears throat> just for like the the final section now i'd love to sort of find out a little bit more um about the coaching that you offer because you know I think what's just fantastic is this journey of your your own personal discovery that you've gone on that has essentially led you to now being this person that you are you've you've, you're happily settling down Mm -hmm. um you've had your adventures you've had the highs and lows you've gone from the uh the shy underdog to you know now living in a different country you've afforded your own property you've involved your 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 uh, your business as well yeah. so um I, i'd love for you to just sort of like explain to guys as well watching this what 
your coaching is, what you help guys with, mm-hmm. and um, uh, and yeah, and just anything else that really you can, <clears throat> you're happy to share about uh, mm. the coaching and, and your services. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I help men get into a long term relationship with their dream woman. That that is what it's about. So, I want to help men get into a relationship with a woman that they that they dream about and that they they see on the street or they imagine the kind of relationship that they would have with them um, and just just help them do that and the way that I do that starting from Christmas this year is an online community based course Mm. so um, the course itself comes in four parts which is called build the man meet her text her date her and that's that's it so it's a four-part course that will just be growing all the time as I add more to it in a variety of formats, video, text, whatever, all this kind of stuff there. So if a guy does these things, I'm very confident that he will um, get to where he needs to go. And as part of that, um, because it's a community, there's other men there. And also um, I'll be there with, um, you know, live calls, uh, tuition, coaching and so on, um, because each guy will be on a different journey. But if that's what you want to achieve, you want that long-term happy relationship, then that's what it's about. Equally, if there are guys out there who you know do want some short-term fun or a long-term relationship isn't for them, but they do want to improve in certain areas, then I don't consider them the enemy. You know, I was once, <laughs> I was once that myself, right? Yeah. And yeah, I think yeah. there's there's nothing wrong with that. There's there's actually two men I know to this day who are they're certainly getting on now. They just want to be single, and they're very clear on that and they've also gone through their own discovery exercises Mm. about what it is they want long term um, as I did and they very much fell into the camp of I don't ever want a relationship long term I don't want children I don't want to get married which is fair enough if if that's their decision and they've they've taken that um, responsibility for it Mm. then yeah yeah, Yeah. for it so the the course that I have build the man you know meet her which you know either approaching or internet dating text her data you know that that will still be good for them except they'll just be kind of on that circular fashion whereas mm. for a lot of guys they can kind of just check out at the end of it so it's good how bespoke then it is because by the sounds of it that uh, yes you've you've got your own way of doing things but it is still very bespoke per client that that you work with mm. yeah you, the, you've got your own style individually tailored to, to each one of them yeah so that so i think i think that's good um so yeah so that's so that's basically it so it'll launch uh Christmas time uh, be 19 spaces for the first 19 guys and then we'll just go forward from there and just see how we go so it's just offering men the reality that I now live I feel very rich in life and I've been there and done it and I've I've got you know this amazing woman in my life who you know supports me in everything I do so it's a really really good outcome and I want other men to have it Mm. I don't want them to take as long as I did to get there and it took, I mean, there's a variety of ways you can look at it in that, you know, I think I entered uh, my relationship with Laura in, in 2020, so 2013, so that was like seven years um, and some failed relationships along the way and Christ knows how many approaches and all that. So I, I don't, if I'd have known what I was doing and asked myself these big questions earlier, I probably could have got into the situation I'm now younger and not not wasted time. I still had a good single life, but probably could have got there a bit sooner. And mm. so what I advertise to men is your dream girlfriend in 90 days. That is a big ask, I know. But I think if a guy brings those two things, which uh, I said earlier, the mindset in the, the belief that he can change his life in this area, and then two, to put the work in, if he does do those things, and there's a few like baseline factors that need to be in place, like he doesn't live in a village with ten people and there's yeah. four women. And yeah, you've got to have realistic expectations yeah, yeah, yeah. of what you can and can't do. Yeah, you, you could, you know, you could have the mindset and you could complete this course and and join all the calls that I have and I can be helping you as well. But if there's only four women in your village and yeah. and that's not really your cup of tea, and, and three of, three of them are married, then it's like yeah, you've got a one in four chance of success. <laughs> yeah, then yeah. then you, we've got to have some got to have some other other factors there. Yeah, then, no, of course. Then then I do, I do believe that is the case. And I think, um, you know, I've, I've seen it with other guys. I've seen it with guys I know. Um, you know, I've helped other men and I will be getting them on the channel, you know, where I've helped them get one, in one case, get married and, and have a baby and the other one in a long-term relationship. So um, it's, it's been great for me. I just want to do it for more men. And I think for me personally, I'll get a lot of satisfaction to help guys do that, especially in today's day and age. Mm-hmm. It is extremely hard for men at the moment I think there's a lot of 
there's just a huge amount going on in society at the moment, you know, as, as we talked briefly about earlier with, you know, criticism of being male, masculinity under attack, you know, ex extreme feminism, you know, feminism in certain areas I've got no issue with, but extreme feminism, I think anything extreme I've got an issue with, but extreme yeah, the, feminism the, the, is... the man bashing. Yeah, yeah the extreme yeah. feminism has become normalised. That, that just gets so much airtime in media and I think that's skewing a lot of men and their views as well. Yeah. And I, it's well, not. It scares them from living. Um, yeah. You know, that's why I think even more help needs to be offered, not just with the whole dating aspect, but just mental health in mm. general. That if guys are scared to just even just reach out to ask for help, then they're just going to essentially suffer in silence. And, you know, and then that just creates its own downward spiral it until, you know, well, in fact, and I think for me, the, the last thing I want to hear about is, is another suicide mm. or, or another death from someone you know for me three is way more three too many mm. really you know so the the more than that you know you're able to offer help to people or certainly with the channels if they can actually end up at least advising guys with the right kind of thing and <clears throat> like what se stepping stones that they can end up taking just to get themselves a more normal life that they can be happy with you know even at that baseline level then yeah, that, that would be great as well. Mm. But if anything, um, yeah. Oh, and the other element as well is, apart from my course, uh, I will do one-to-one -one, um, for guys basically doing the same thing. So rather than them doing the course online and having calls, um, once or twice a year, maybe three times a year, I will do a one-to-one -one for months with a guy to take him from building himself up to then learning how to approach an internet date and then text and date as well. Because that's what I did with the two previous clients just before yeah. COVID when I was finding out if this is for me is I did spend basically one-to-one -one time with them for months to to do that. So that is like a little separate premium thing that I'm offering mm. um, as well. And the first guy that I do that with will be for free um, just to prove, you know, because if it's not on YouTube, it's not real. Um, and just get that filmed and just and just show that, that, that it can be done. So... Um, that's something that I'll be offering is, is like the higher end service, but everything else is, you know, on this course, which is more than enough, I think, to get men to where they need to go. So. Oh, yeah. And to be able to do it anyway in 90 days, I mean, I, even I agree, I think that's actually very doable. Mm. If a guy is able to go out and practice as frequently as you kind of tell him to, and he goes in with a very optimistic mindset as well, as long as he takes that feedback that he needs on board rather than maybe taking it to heart, because I've, I've certainly met guys who are like, you say, like, you, you've got to do this and this, and they're like, really? You know, and they give you like the puppy dog face, like as if you've just told them the most offensive thing. And all you said is just like, like no, no, just keep it cool and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, no, I think as, yeah, as long as guys go in with a very level head and they are putting in the effort into meeting people, uh, and they, they're happy to take that feedback on board that they need, whether it be tough love or actually giving them a, a better or clearer understanding of just how to talk to people, mm -hmm. then yeah, I, I, I do, I agree. I think it's very easy. In fact, I mean, you could probably even do it in like a month, really dependent on the city yeah. and, and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, like, and I don't know what, what Australia is like compared to London. I mean, from chats I think that we've had, you've kind of said that London's obviously certainly busier, busier and more bigger. populated yeah, yeah. and stuff, but... Obviously, you just work with what you've got, um, and yeah, and I, but I think that's that's great with you know with what you're offering, and certainly with how you can help guys uh, as well, and and hopefully, yeah, the guys can resonate with the story that and journey that you've you've been on because I think we've all got very similar stories mm -hmm. in why everyone kind of gets into the dating community anyway, um, but yeah, hopefully, um, uh, definitely, yeah, guys who are watching this, absolutely check out. David's channel. Um, have a look at his coaching as well. Uh, I know you, you didn't mention it, but you have got a book. Oh yeah, uh, as yeah, well. the texting book. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> be me, me bring it up, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've got your, your texting book as well. So I'll yes. put a link in the uh, description um, underneath Thank the you. video so people can can check that out. Um, but if anything, I mean, I hope that this video was really useful for you. Uh, it is a first, um, so uh, give it time and a bit of love. Definitely as the uh, interviews or channels grow and develop there'll be just as interesting and many more topics that we'll cover and, and hopefully I'll have David back 
uh, again, although it'll probably have to be over Zoom, I think, next yeah, time. Next time uh, yeah, yeah. David's going to be going back to Australia in a couple of days, or most likely when you're watching this, he will already be back in yeah. Australia. Um, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll be able to like talk about more stuff um, anyway. But um, if anything, yeah, thank you so much for doing the interview with me. Um, I wanted to be able to take the opportunity of doing um, uh, a YouTube series of interviews with coaches that actually flush out more of their backstory. Mm. Um, I think it's too easy for people to kind of come in and, you know, they, they become coaches, but you just don't know, like where they've been in in their journey and if they're even relatable or not. Um, And I kind of like having the ability of telling the story of people and whatever that story is, whether um, they are guys, I know there's going to be coaches that I'll interview who are just confident anyway, or they came from a background of something quite decent rather than them maybe being shy. But, you know, if there's stories that people can relate to and certainly the journeys that they've gone on, then... um, yeah, that, that's kind of what I, I quite like. So again, thank you so much for no uh, allowing me to do this podcast with you. Uh, as I say, first of many. And um, and yeah, so we'll, we'll wrap it there. And I hope you enjoyed the video. If you can, uh, like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel where you can stay up to date on more content that's going to help you to work on your anxiety or build your confidence, especially in the dating field. And if you've got any questions for David absolutely leave them underneath this video and if you've also got any other topics that you want me to be uh, covering on the channel especially um, in the field of dating maybe even interviewing particular experts or coaches as well then I would love to hear it too but other than that subscribe and look forward to more videos from me and hopefully David as well uh, in the, uh, the coming future.